So I'm here with uh, Dr. Emma Bocock. Thank you for joining me. We're going to have a look at how to image the aortic valve on TOE. So I classically start off at, you know, in a gastric view with a short axis view. Um, this guy's not super easy to scan, but thank you very much for being part of the video. Um, I normally start in the deep gastric, so if I help me out with that, but I'm going to go, I, I push in the probe until I can't see anything on the screen. Mm -hmm. I start doing gentle anti-flexion. If I see anything, I stop. I push it in just a little bit more. Full anti-flexion, I can't see anything now, and I'll gently retract the probe until I start to see something that starts to come in, and I'm looking for something that looks a little bit like a five chamber. Um, and here you can just, I think, see the aortic valve starting to come in. I use colour in this to try and find it. Just gently yes. pulling back. Your scale's still right down there. That's oh, right. sorry, I turned the scale yes. up, thank you. And then I can try and have a look, and I think I'm starting to see the aortic valve coming in there. Obviously, you can't see a lot of the aortic valve. If I lose it, I'm going to, again, advance, full anti-flexion, gently pull back, trying to find that five-chamber view. And I think if we were to put the continuous wave through there, we'd see something. Yeah. So yeah, we'll move the baseline up, turn down the scale, and there's the flow through the aortic valve. Yeah. If we then do pulse wave Doppler, we can normally try and find... Again, scale up. You can get, the, you get a sense there of the... Um, sorry, I'm much of the 2D back. And that's maybe a way of starting to try and have a decent look at the deep gastric view. So again, you've got to be careful. This is the one that's probably more of the, one of the more uncomfortable views for the patient. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. I give myself a chance there. You probably just see me stick the pulse wave just back. There you go. Looking for the closing click, not looking for the opening click. Looking for the modal velocity. And there you can get your way of doing maybe a DSI or something like that to try and have a look, to come, to look at flows across the aortic valve. Using sinus rhythm, so we could just average three, but I'll just show how we would trace the nice, nice. Middle velocity. Close enough. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And what's the other? What's the other angle we got for this one then? So we can come up to just your transgastric view, and increase our angle to about 120. Again, depending on the patient. So we, I think we're just kind of entering a, a mid-esophageal view there, hey? Sure. Yeah. I'll put, how about that? So again, it's not perfect, yeah, not, but you get the idea. Nice. That's not a bad yeah. view. So looking at the aortic valve, 120 gastric view, not uh, mid-esophageal view. And you get quite a nice alignment there. A second bite of the cherry, you know, toe's not great for Doppler angles, obviously, but you do what you can with what, you, you know, with the views that you've got. I think deep gastric is a little challenging, so here we can try the Gastric 120 view, again, look, continuous wave Doppler to try and have a look at the flows through the aortic valve. And then we can do pulse wave Doppler as well. And we've got to see our angles off by what? 30 yeah, degrees at least. So, but it gives you an idea at least, and sometimes that's the best we've got. Yeah. All right, um, where's next? So now we're going to go to our money views, the mid esophageal views, where you often get more. Um, assessment of your 2D assessment of the aortic valve. Um, so I mean, we usually, you, so we, we, you know, we can do the long axis of the aortic valve first, yeah. and then move to short axis. Okay, and long axis explain. is going to be 120 or so. I sort of try and find the aortic valve in there. I'll then change the angle a little bit, trying to open up both the left ventricle and the aortic valve. It's a little tricky with him. that far. And we can obviously see different cusp CSM, which is slightly, which is different to what we're used to seeing on transthoracic. Yeah. That's probably the best long axis view I can get. He doesn't, yeah. we don't get the perfect views. And um, so this one. So what cusp do you reckon we're looking at there? I don't have a pointer on this, hey, but we've got right coronary, which is attached to the right coronary cusp is here, which you can't see because I'm in young. You could use the big, the big use? circle on the cursor mm -hmm. so you can move that. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, nice. So this is the right coronary cusp here. Yep. And then this is either left or non, and we don't yeah, know essentially. Nice. So what we're going to do now is explain through this, and that can, that can help us. 
So we explain, and then we need to just move that so it cuts through the aortic valve, and then if we hit right invert, it makes this more anatomical for us. Now we're doing this scan to have a look to, you know, it's a young gentleman who's had a stroke, right? I mean, I gotta say, I don't think that looks entirely normal, right? No. Um, hang on, very quickly, just go through the cusps of the um, so aortic valve. I'm not gonna be able to use this anymore, no. Oh, should we just do 2D, I might just grab that. Um, should we just do the single on the, I can go to 30 on the, yeah, should we just uh, go to the yeah, short axis? Yeah, just go short axis. Yeah. So now I go down to about 30 degrees, um, and I just I pulled up a little bit, and there's the short axis aortic valve, one of my favourite views, and all of echo just looks like a you know, flower opening or something like that. Yeah, so usually you get this between sort of 30 and 50. Yeah. Um, so we use the landmark of the intratrial septum. Yeah. And Chris likes to say, which I've stolen, um, the non-coronary likes to sit on the fence. I quite like that. So the cusp that's next to the <laughs> um, intratrial septum nice is, the, on the fence. is the non-coronary. Non <laughs> and, um, and then this one, so that's how you sort of anchor yeah. it where you're at. This one is next to the right ventricle. So this is your right coronary yeah. cusp. And then we have left coronary Beautiful. cusp here. Do you mind just chucking a bit of colour over that for me? Sweet. And it's important for your colour, that colour box that you don't want it too, too big and you want your gain setting to be correct. So I'm just going to show you an example of overgaining where you see all this speckling. Yeah. And then you don't want your scale to be too uh, low, which I might just show you what happens when you put the scale down too much as well. So between nice. you know, 50 and 70. Cool. And then you can look at that and I guess explain again at 30 degrees. I generally do so just in a, another bite of the cherry and you can move your cursor on the left hand screen through it in different areas yeah, and it's important. there on that, um, that non-coronary cusp it's almost like there's a, a nodule there and I mean that nodule can be a number of things it can just be a you know it could be a remnant of a um, papillary fibroelastoma I guess would be the worry in a gentleman who's had a stroke it could be an area of calcification you know particularly we see those in more elderly patients or patients with renal failure it's a bit weird it's just one cusp rather than all of them um, you know, it can be associated with you know, uh, endocarditis, obviously you've got a patient who's got positive blood cultures, I guess non-bacterial endocarditis in patients with lupus, you know, that, this guy certainly doesn't have any of that. Yeah, yeah um, it's all about clinical context, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And that's probably anything else for the aortic valve, I think that's probably nice. We've got our deep gastric views, we've got a gas at zero we, um, with uh, anti full anti-flexion, we've got our 120 degrees in the gastric view, trying yeah. to get another alignment through there and that's where the Doppler angles can be used. And then we've got the 120 in the mid esophageal for the long axis and then we've got 30 to 50 in uh, a little bit higher in the upper esophageal for the short axis. Yeah, I guess you could say, you know, an assessment of the aortic valve is not complete without an assessment of the aortic root. So yeah, we, very nice. So we could potentially and show how we would... Very nice. So I'm going to go back to 120 route. for that. Now, if I want to have a look at the aortic root, because I'm in 120 degrees, I've now got to pull back. I think we might lose contact a little bit, increase up the sector width. I'm going to do a little bit of anti-flexion, a little bit of retroflexion, just try to find the contact. And I think that's probably the best I'm going to get like that. Yeah. Very nice. Anyway, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Cheers.